Today we are learning how matter is conserved during chemical reactions. We want to learn this because we need to understand conservation of matter in order to balance chemical reactions. And our success criteria for today is being able to describe why matter is conserved. So in math, we can say 1 plus 1 equals 2. And when we do that, we can also write it down. We can represent it using symbols. The numbers 1 and 2 are actually symbolic. They're not the value itself. They're a symbol we use to communicate that value. Same thing with the plus sign and the equal sign. Plus sign is a symbol for addition, and equal sign is a symbol saying that both sides of the sign are equivalent of each other. Just like mathematicians will use symbols to build their equations, scientists will also use numbers and symbols in order to represent chemical reactions. Like we've seen before, we can represent compounds using the atomic symbols. If it's an element, it'll just have a single atomic symbol. If it's a compound, it will have more than one. So chemists will represent reactions using numbers and symbols as well. Now, an important thing about this is that we do use plus signs, just like we do in math, but the plus signs in chemistry really means and this. It's not actually an addition of two things together. It's saying that all of these uh, particles need to be present for the reaction to take place. We also never use equal signs in chemistry. We always use arrows, and there's a good reason for this. In math, the equal sign means both sides of the reaction are the same as each other. Well, in chemistry, they're not the same as each other. We have a reaction here, hydrogen combustion, where hydrogen burns in the presence of oxygen, and it creates water vapor, or it creates water. Hydrogen and oxygen particles are not the same as water particles, even if the same number of particles is present. So we never use equals. We always use the arrow, which means the reactants become the products. We also want you to notice in this equation that there's the same number of hydrogen atoms in both the products and reactants. And if you count it up, it's true for oxygen as well. On both sides, there are four hydrogen atoms because in both the hydrogen molecule and the water molecule, each of them have two hydrogen atoms in one particle. And in both cases, there are two particles of hydrogen and two particles of water. So two times two is, of course, four. And you'll see there are four hydrogens on each side. We can see the same thing with oxygen as well. There is only one molecule of oxygen, but in that one molecule of oxygen, there are two atoms because of that small subscript, too. There's only one oxygen in each water molecule, but there's two water molecules. So there's still two atoms of oxygen. We call this the law of conservation of mass. And if that sounds very similar to the law of conservation of energy, that's because it is. Mass and energy, once you really get into it, are just two sides of the same coin. So in a chemical reaction, the atoms on each side of the reaction always have to be the same, okay? You cannot create or destroy atoms, just like you cannot create or destroy energy. And what that means is that the mass of both the reactants and the products also has to be the same. There is going to be the same total mass of all the reacting substances present at the beginning of the reaction as there is the same total mass of all of the resulting products at the end of the reaction. 
This phenomenon was discovered by a French chemist named Antoine Lavoisier. What he did is he experimented with different chemical reactions in closed systems. A closed system is just a system that doesn't allow matter to pass in or out. And what he found was that there was no gain or loss of mass in any chemical reaction. Even in reactions where people thought mass was being lost, what Lavoisier realized is that mass was actually disappearing as a gas. So it looked like it was going away, but it was just spreading out into the environment. And by putting his experiments into a closed system, Lavoisier was able to see that no mass was being lost or gained. It was just changing from reactants into products. And that is because all of the at the beginning of the reaction is also present at the end of the reaction.